In this video, I'm going to show you two different methods for moving mines to a disposal area. The reason you would move them is because if you detonate them in place, they may cause unacceptable amounts of damage to the area. Uh, example would be if mines were laid in a road and you do not have the repair crews or assets to be able to fill in the potholes to allow passage of passage of convoys and personnel through the area. The mines could be surface laid across a bridge or they could be surface laid over the top of an airfield or buried in an airfield if it's a dirt strip. This first method I'm going to show you was a method that was come up with by the 82nd Airborne in the US Army for clearing mines off of airfield tarmacs. They had a problem where Doctrine said the mines had to be destroyed in place, but if they did that it would create huge potholes in the tarmac Meaning that the airfield would be out of action longer. They wouldn't be able to bring in heavy assets as quickly Now if this is done over a roadway first you want to check the immediate area and surrounding areas for other landmines it is possible there could be buried mines especially in a personnel mines you may think that uh, you'll just bring in your mine detector you'll turn down the sensitivity so that it does not react to a heavy metallic mine like this one an M15 but if you do that you run the risk of not being able to detect low metallic anti-personnel mines like the USM-14 or the Russian PMN series. Now what you're going to need for this is a length of rope or engineer tape that is between 40 to 50 meters in length. You will tie a loop at the end. You will have a slip knot tied on itself. What I have here is a girth hitch. so that I can slide it to tighten it up. 25 meters from that knot, you want to either tie a very large knot or mark it with some type of tape because 25 meters is the minimum safe distance when you are moving an anti-tank mine, if you are in the prone. You want to stay at least 25 meters away from the mine when you're moving it. So we've gone through, we've checked the area, we found no other mines in the immediate area. Come in, place the noose over the mine, tighten up the knot. as best we can. We then back off to the end of the rope. Get down into prone. And then we start pulling the mine. Now when you get to the knot or the tape, the mine has moved su sufficiently that if there is an anti-handling device, it should have detonated the mine. If it has not detonated, you can, in theory, remove the noose from the mine, pick it up, and then move it to the disposal area off in a field away from the roadway. Once all the mines are cleared, the convoy or personnel have gone past, then you can go through, set your charges, and detonate those mines. This next method is in uh, U.S. field manuals for removing buried anti-tank mines. Uh, the particular way I'm going to do it here is the way I've seen Russian engineers doing it in uh, the Ukraine and also in Chechnya and Georgia. Because the manual does give you in words what's supposed to be done but it does help having video 
and pictures of the operation to see what exactly they're talking about. For this operation, we will need either a tripod or an A-frame of sticks here. We will need either a grappling hook or another type of hook. I'm working on an idea, I haven't had it made yet, of using single hooks made out of lighter gauged metal, which should be cheaper, far cheaper than a grappling hook. A conventional army may have the supply resources to be able to replace grappling hooks. We don't. So it, for us it would be more economical to have a supply of single use hooks on hand. Now when you're doing this, you're trying to get it out of the ground to move it to a disposal area to get rid of it, or you're trying to set off an anti-handling device on the mine so that you can save your resources for other missions, other purposes. Now, for this, we bring in our A-frame, grappling hook, And just like with uh, doing the two finger sweeps, which is how we uncovered this mine, we, we can wear body armor, we can wear helmets, but we should not have metal on us just in case there is magnetic triggers on the mine. Magnetic fusing, sorry. Now what I had to do is dig out a bit over here so that I can run the grapple hook down in there. Get it under there. Get at least one of the hooks good underneath. Make sure this is set good. And then just like with moving the surface laid mine using the rope, we want to be greater than 25 meters away from the mine. What we're trying to do is lift it up out of the ground. If we can lift it up out of the ground, flip it, then that tells us there is no anti-handling device attached. So then we can go up to the mine, pick it up, and then move it to the disposal area. Uh, before you move any mine to the disposal area, if you have the capabilities, safe the mine meaning remove it from an armed status to a safe status so that in theory you're a little bit safer when you're moving it. Now we would back off and then start pulling the grappling hook. Now you may think that the pressure plate would go off on an anti-tank mine but anti-tank mines typically have a 200 to a about 600, 650 pound requirement for setting off the pressure plate. So now we come back up. The mine has not detonated. Move it back over. If we can, we move it to safe using two hands and anti-tank mines are very heavy. Pick it up and move it to the disposal area for destruction. And that's basically how you move mines to a disposal area for laser, later disposal if you do not want to destroy them at the location they were laid because it could cause too much damage. Now for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia Movement, always remember, SAONS.